Hello everyone, welcome to Simply Maker channel. Today I like to make this fume extractor using my old PC fan. If you do a lot of soldering, you know how important it is to keep yourself safe from harmful fumes. Our fume extractor is designed to do just that. Because it has a built-in buck converter, this fume extractor can accept a wide range of power inputs. The working voltage is around 10 to 23 volts. I've designed it to use with my DIY soldering station, so it can share input from a single Makita battery. But it can also be used with any power supply. I also include an extra DC port for forwarding the input to other DC devices, and also an LCD voltmeter that lets you monitor the main input voltage. This is particularly useful to save space and reduce clutter on your workbench. You can use it to power portable LED lights, test a module, power a test circuit and so on. And if you are using portable soldering iron similar to this one, or the popular TS100, you can share the power supply by connecting the soldering iron power supply to the extractor, and then plugging the soldering iron into the extra DC port. Moreover, I've included a USB-C power delivery input. With a suitable USB power delivery charger, you can also power the soldering iron with it. In this video, I'm using this cheap 100 watt charger from AliExpress. Additionally, I've designed it with a built-in carbon filter bay. You can quickly and easily replace the filter with a simple latch door mechanism. I also included a detachable hood that uses small magnets to hold it securely to the case. This allows it to be easy to attach and remove as needed. At the bottom of the case, I included a slot for a 4 cm magnet that let it attach to a steel base, and some holes for M4 hot melt insert nuts for an additional attachment. To make it even more versatile, I'm working on its add-on battery pack. So stay tuned and hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss any updates. So, let's start making it. First, let's prepare the 3D print parts. Begin by inserting an M4 hot melt insert nut into the fan case. For this project, I use M4 nuts with a diameter of 6mm, and a height of 5mm. There are 4 spots on the center part, and 2 on the back cover. Next, let's prepare the PC fan. The fan I have has 3 pins Molex connector. Pin 1 is the ground wire, pin 2 on the center is V+, and the last pin is for speed control. You can identify the ground wire by the black strip on the cable. To make maintenance easier, it's a good idea to use a connector between the fan and the power supply. But I don't have the Molex connector, so I will replace it with a 2 pin JST connector. Start by cutting the fan wire to the appropriate length. Then separate each wire from the other. I've cut off the unused signal wire to get it out of the way. Crimp the female connector to the fan wires, making sure to pay attention to the pin orientation to prevent the wires from twisting. Once that's done, insert the wires into the housing. Next, crimp the male connector to the wires for the buck converter output. Then insert them into the housing. And make sure that the wires are connected to the right pole.
Now, moving on to wiring the electronic components. Here is a wiring diagram for the extractor. I already include a link to this diagram in the video description below. Let's start with the buck converter. Connect the crimped wire to the converter's output. Then solder the other two wires to the input. The positive wire will go to the rocker switch, and the negative wire will go to the main input. Before assembly it to the case, it's a good idea to ensure that the converter output matches the fan input. Connect the converter to the power supply and measure the output voltage with a voltmeter. Use a small screwdriver to adjust the potentiometer until the voltmeter reads around 12 volts. Attach VHB tape to the back of the buck converter, then attach it to provide a slot on the fan case. Next, we'll move on to the voltmeter. The voltmeter I have has three wires, that allow the meter to use on a separate power supply. However, for this project, we'll be using the same power supply to power the meter. To simplify things, I will just cut off the yellow wire, and connect it to the meter V plus to reduce the number of wires coming from the meter. Mount the meter into the case, and use two button head M3 screws to secure it. In the next step, we will wire the rocker switch, starting by soldering a wire to one of the switch pins for input from the power socket. Then connect another pin with the wire from the buck converter input positive. Cover both pins with a shrink tube and insert the switch into the switch hole. Next, I'll be working on the PD trigger board. The PD board I have is 15 volts. So I just bridge the jumper to get 20 volts. For additional safety, we'll use a diode connected to the board output to prevent the current flow to the board while we supply power to the DC socket. Begin by soldering one pin of the diode to the board output positive. Make sure that the gray strip on the diode faces out of the board. And solder the negative wire to the converter output minus. Then solder the positive wire to another pin. After finishing, cover it with a shrink tube. Attach VHB tape to the back of the board and stick it to the case. Next, let's wire the DC sockets. We'll need two of these for our fume extractor. First, solder the positive wire to the center pin, and then the negative wire to another pin. After that, cover them with shrink tubes. To mount them to the case, just place the nut into the provided slot and screw the DC socket in. Use a plier to tighten it firmly. Now, we finish assembling all the electronic components. It's time to connect all the inputs together. To do this, we will be using a screw terminal block. We'll start with the wires on the side with the USB-C board. Twist the positive wires from the USB-C board, the left DC socket, and the wire from the switch together. After they're securely connected, apply some solder to the twisted wires to create a strong joint. We'll do the same for the negative wires, 
including the wire from the left DC socket, the USB-C board, and the negative wire from the buck converter input. We'll repeat this process for the other side, by combining the wire from the right DC input, and the voltmeter. You can refer to the wiring diagram for more details. To make things clear, I just mark a block for the positive pole with a red marker. Connect a twisted wire from both sides to the screw terminal, and tighten the screws to make sure everything is securely connected. Then organize the wiring with some cable ties. Now we finished all the wiring. Let's move on to assembling the fan. We'll start by attaching the fan to the case. And connecting it to the buck converter. Then insert the shimmer into the bottom corner of the fan. and use 35mm M4 screws to hold it to the case. Attach the center part of the fan case and firmly tighten both screws. Close the back cover. Then insert the shimmers into the top corner of the fan. Then use a 55mm M4 screw to secure the latch with the case and the back cover. Secure the back cover with two 10mm M4 screws. And two button head M3 screws at the corner. Finally, Use two flathead 35mm M3 screws and insert them into the front bottom holes to complete the assembly. Now let's prepare a carbon filter. Cut a carbon filter sheet to about 12 by 12 cm. I use a 1 cm thick filter. And insert it into the filter bay. So now we finish the main unit. Now let's continue with the detachable hood. We need to attach 5mm diameter magnets to the holes provided on the hood. But unfortunately, I just found out that the holes are a little bit too tight. So I need to use a 5mm drill bit to widen it up. And smooth the overhang with a rotary tool, a small chisel, and sandpaper. 
But don't worry, I have already updated the model by providing more clearance, so you might not need to do this. Once you're sure the magnets fit, apply some epoxy glue to each magnet and insert them into the holes. Okay, that's it. But before we wrap up this video, I want to mention a few cautions when using this fume extractor. Firstly, please note that the module we use to regulate the voltage for the fan is a step-down converter. To ensure that the fan will run at optimal speed, make sure that the power supply you're using can deliver a voltage higher than the voltage required by the fan you're using. And if you're using a USB-C port, Make sure that the charger support power delivery that can output more than a regular USB charger. Secondly, it's important to remember that the extra DC outlets are not regulated circuits. So, before you plug any other device into them, make sure that it can accept the voltage from the main input. You can easily monitor the input voltage with the built-in voltmeter. Don't forget to check out the video description below for a complete list of all the necessary components, tools, and a link to download the 3D print parts for this project. If you have any questions or need additional information, please feel free to add them in the comments section below. I'll happy to answer any questions you may have. Lastly, if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more exciting DIY ideas and projects. I'll see you next time. Happy making! And thank you for watching!